Good evening. I'm Chris Mattis in Washington. Leading off tonight, live long and prosper. That was Mr. Spock's farewell wish in Star Trek. So let's talk space. Anyone old enough to remember the moon landing or John Glenn orbiting the Earth or Alan Shepard's first flight remembers how we were all filled with pride. We didn't make it to space first. The Soviets did with Sputnik, but we certainly beat them to the moon. Do we still need manned space flights? Are they worth the money and the risk? President Obama says no, at least not for now. But a a lot of people like Neil Armstrong disagree. Florida Senator Bill Nelson, who once flew in space himself, joins us at the top of the show. Let's start with the future of space flight and the president's remarks at the Kennedy Space Center today down in Florida. Democratic Florida Senator Bill Nelson sits on the Science and Red Transportation Committee. He himself orbited this Earth aboard the Space Shuttle Columbia back in 86. Senator, it's great to have you on. You're the best possible guest we can have. You've flown in space. You represent Cape Canaveral, Cape Kennedy, and you believe in manned space. Let's listen together to the president on the moon, and then you react. Here he is. Let's listen. I understand that some believe that we should attempt a return to the surface of the moon first, as previously planned. But I, I just have to say, pretty bluntly here, we've been there before. Buzz has been there. There's a lot more of space to explore and a lot more to learn when we do. So I believe it's more important to ramp up our capabilities to reach and operate at a series of increasingly demanding targets while advancing our technological capabilities with each step forward. And that's what this strategy does. Well, I guess the big question is, are we still the great space pioneers we were under Kennedy? Kennedy launched us to the moon. We got there under Nixon. We loved it. Uh, are we still going to be the leaders in space 10, 20 years from now, Senator Nelson? Yes, sir, we are, and I think uh, the president set us on a course, and he said, uh, we were on the moon 40 years ago. We don't need to go back to the moon. We need to get out into deep space. And one of the great things that he did today, Chris, is that he set destinations and a timetable in deep space. He talked about being on an asteroid in 2025, and that's after we developed the heavy lift vehicle, which uh, our committee is going to continue developing, and the president said he wanted it at least by 2015, the architecture. Is this just about thrust? What's it take to get from here to, to the moon? I'm sorry, we got to the moon, as you pointed out, decades ago. What's it take to get to Mars? First of all, again, let's watch the president, then you react. A lot of Americans would like to get to Mars. It's not the number one ambition. A lot of people are just thinking about Friday night and the next paycheck. But Mars is interesting. Let's listen to what the president said about Mars. And unlike the previous program, we are setting a course with specific and achievable milestones. Early in the next decade, a set of crewed flights will test and prove the systems required for exploration beyond low Earth orbit. And by 2025, we expect new spacecraft designed for long journeys to allow us to begin the first ever crewed missions beyond the moon into deep space. By the mid-2030s, I believe we can send humans to orbit Mars and return them safely to Earth. And a landing on Mars will follow. And I expect to be around to see it. Well, that's optimistic for us all. We're all hope to be there in 2030, I think. My question is, are we going to get to Mars, and what does it take that we don't have? Well, we have to develop new technologies. Right now, we send uh, humans to Mars. It'd take us 10 months to get there. Uh, Chris, one of my crewmates is developing a plasma rocket that would take us to Mars in 39 days. Uh, if you went under conventional technology to Mars, whenever they have a solar explosion, our astronauts would get fried. You've got to create the kind of protection, probably uh, a, a magnetic field that will protect you from that solar radiation. Uh, those are the kinds of things. We don't have it today, but the president setting us on a course, saying we're going there, we're going first to an asteroid, then we're going to deeper space, maybe a Mars flyby, and then eventually to the surface of Mars. You've got to set the vision, just like President Kennedy did, and then you start working toward it. Okay, what's this uh, kerfuffle about the other day? Why did Neil Armstrong take a shot at the president? What's his problem with the president's program as you understand it? 
You know, I don't understand it, uh, Chris, because uh, people, his crewmate, uh, Buzz Aldrin, uh, certainly feels differently. Sally Ride feels differently. I think what Buzz uh, or, or what Neil was re reacting to was the perception, which was real. Uh, a real perception that the president had canceled the manned space program. And of course, in my visits with the president, I said, you've got to turn this around because that's not what you believe. And I think he turned that around today if people will listen to the specifics of what he said. And he did it in a very eloquent and visionary way. What are we getting out of space travel? A lot of my producers and people I work with here have asked me the big question. We go up, we come back. What do we bring back? I mean, the joke, it's not a joke. It's, I used to be, when I was single, I got to tell you, I drank a lot of Tang. It was one thing I could keep in the house without worrying about anything but ice cubes. I could make Tang. I could make instant coffee. Besides Tang, what have we gotten out of the space program for us here on Earth? Well, for example, when we went to the moon, you had to develop highly reliable systems that were small in volume and light in weight. And that uh, ignited the entire micro miniaturization. Uh, the photography that we have today came as a direct spinoff of the space program. Uh, modern miracle medicines, uh, for example, equipment, uh, MRIs, uh, a lot of the digital stuff has come directly out of the space program. Uh, the list is so long, you can't believe it. Uh, and if you want something simple, Velcro. Use Velcro instead of Tang because Tang really wasn't used in the space program. It wasn't, that's just a myth, huh? <laughs> It is. They actually okay. have all kinds of good juices up there now. OK, let's take a look at the president. The serious note here is the president on our leadership in space. Let's finish up with this, Senator. Uh, here's the president. Our goal is no longer just a destination to reach. Our goal is the capacity for people to work and learn and operate and live safely beyond the Earth for extended periods of time, ultimately in ways that are more sustainable and even indefinite. And in fulfilling this task, we will not only extend humanity's reach in space, we will strengthen America's leadership here on Earth. Wow. You know what Jacqueline Kennedy wanted to have as a memorial to her president when he was killed? Besides the eternal flame, she wanted one other thing, Senator. I'm telling you, as I tell everybody, I just dug this up. She wanted to have Jack's signature, just his hand. She wanted Bob McNamara, the Secretary of Defense, just to write Jack's name on the next Saturn rocket, the one that was going to beat the Soviets in the next fight, in the next race to space. That's all she wanted for her husband had been killed. Anyway, your thoughts, your final thought. We're going to be the leader in space, right? It's part of our destiny as an American people. We are by nature explorers and adventurers. We've always had a frontier. And that's why the people down here were upset, Chris, when they thought the president had canceled the, the man program. But I think he showed he has that vision for us to fulfill our destiny of exploring the heavens. Okay, it's great to have you on. It's great to have you on. I mean that really.